This is Disney Travel Tales, a trip report show helping you to become an expert at navigating your next Disney vacation. Join me every Friday for all things Disney related. Not traveling to Disney anytime soon? Never fear, we are still the show for you. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in someone else's trip. All the joy, none of the stress. All right, if you're ready, let's get to today's show. Hello and welcome. I am Jenny, your podcast host and travel coach, and you are listening to episode 119, where I am going to do my best to explain the new lightning lane system at Walt Disney World in Florida. The new system is here. It went into effect yesterday and We are saying goodbye to Genie Plus. Genie Plus is no longer around to purchase. You can still use the Genie to summon your day and to kind of give you tips on your day. However, the new purchase to not stand in the standby line system is called the Lightning Lane system. Just right off the bat, I actually think this is much more streamlined considering when you're at the parks, you get in the lightning lane line instead of the standby line. So having it being named the same thing, I think is going to be so much easier, especially for first time guests or even guests coming back to the park that aren't super familiar with the park. It just makes more sense. I'm not even sure why they didn't do this from the start, but we have the new system. It is in effect. It is in effect. And I got to use it yesterday. I've been wanting to do this episode since we learned about the new system. However, because it was not live and I hadn't had a chance to use it, I thought I would just wait. I will be back next week. I will be at Disney World using this um, hands-on every day that we are there. And I will do a whole nother episode about what it's like using it in the parks when I get back. This episode is just going to be a quick overview about the new system and then my experience booking in advance. So just like Genie Plus, the Lightning Lane system, the Lightning Lane passes allows you to skip the standby line and join a shorter line for select attractions and experiences. You purchase this per day. So there are two options. There's the Lightning Lane multi-pass, which you purchase per person per day, and you get to choose from multiple rides to, uh, multiple rides to ride. That's really hard to say for some reason. And then there's the lightning lane single pass. This is for those big attractions at each park that you purchase to ride one time. And it's a per person purchase. This you can do, um, obviously you can purchase them both just like with the genie plus when that was in fact, um, you can purchase one or both. And it's just going to add a little bit more magic to your day. And it's just going to allow your day to run a little bit more smoothly. Right off the bat, some new things that are changing with this program is it is making it much more valuable to stay at an on-site Disney resort because guests staying at on-site resorts will be able to purchase their Lightning Lane seven days in advance of their check-in date, and they can go ahead and purchase and schedule three rides for each park day of their entire trip up to 10 days. Yes, you heard me correct. So before you arrive, you can go ahead get on. It will give you the option to purchase. You get to choose the day. You get to choose the park. So this is where it's going to be interesting to see how it works in the park because you need to choose the, from what I'm understanding, the first park you plan to visit that day if you have a park hopper. We are going to talk more about that later in the show when I talk about my actual experience using this system. But for right now, you will be allowed seven days in advance to get on your app to purchase this, uh, the multi-pass. We're just going to talk about the multi-pass right now. You can purchase the multi-pass per day of your trip and choose three rides and arrival times, arrival windows at those rides. For this single pass, it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to be allowed to hop on seven days in advance. You can go choose the single pass option, see which park you're going to be in and purchase it for 
the rides that are off that is offered in that park. You can only have two of these purchased a day. So if you're planning to do the big four park challenge, you're only going to be able to purchase two single pass riders for the day. Now let's talk about the multi-pass ride options. If you've been around for a while, if you've been visiting Disney for a while, you are probably a little bit familiar with FastPass and FastPass Plus. It, I mean, I went to Disney when FastPass was offered, but honestly, I can't even remember hardly how it worked. (laughs) So if you do remember, there was a tier system and that is the same way with this multi-pass option. There is a tier system. So at each park minus Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom is the only park that does not have a tier system. Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Epcot will have a tier one, and that's going to have their more popular rides. Tier two is going to be the other rides um, that are being offered that might not be the top liners of the park. One thing people have noticed and are kind of not feeling great about is they have taken away all character meet and greets off of this system. So with Genie Plus, you used to be able to meet some of the characters through um, the Genie, you know, you could get a fast path or a lightning lane for that. Those are all gone. So right now it's mostly just rides and a couple of shows at some of the parks. So when you go to book, you get to choose one tier one from each park and then two tier threes. Those are the ones you get to schedule ahead of time. Now, when you are in the park, after you have checked into your first selection, then all the rides just become equal and you can just go from there and choose from what is available and the times that are available. Something that's really cool is with the Lightning Lane Multipass, you are given the digital downloads of your ride photos. So those are automatically going to be put into your My Disney Experience account. So that's really neat, especially if you don't purchase Memory Maker and you do purchase this, you will have your ride photos. Going kind of back a little bit before we move forward, this is all going to be purchased and booked in your My Disney Experience app. Um, I guess I kind of assume people know that, but just in case you weren't sure, This is all going to be done in your My Disney Experience app. Of course, you need your resort reservation and park tickets linked to your account so that you can make these selections. For guests that are not staying at a Disney resort, you will be allowed to make your selections three days before your check-in or your first park day. So that's something to think about. This is definitely, they are definitely finally giving us a few more perks to staying at these Disney resorts, which I love. I have made a really nice graphic that I have over on our Disney Travel Tales Instagram page. If you want to go over and save it so that you can go back and look at it, it types out all of the rides and the tiers for each park. So that's kind of a nice little cheat sheet I made for y'all to have. But let's just go over all of those right now. And you can find all of this information as well on the Walt Disney World website. But starting at Magic Kingdom, the tier one rides at Magic Kingdom, which means you can choose one of these rides when you're booking your multi-pass, is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight, Space Mountain, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I was actually really surprised that Tiana's was not going to be a single pass purchase rider. I thought they might move Seven Dwarfs over here and put Tiana over there, but they didn't, which I'm pleasantly surprised about. Your tier two rides are going to be Barnstormer, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Haunted Mansion, It's a Small World, Mad Tea Party, The Magic Carpets of Aladdin, The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Mickey's Fill Her Magic, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, Pirates of the Caribbean, Tomorrowland Speedway, and Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. The single pass attractions at Magic Kingdom, which means you have to pay per ride just to ride this one time, you have to pay for it separate from your multi-pass, is Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Tron Light Cycle Run. All of the pricing for multi-pass for the single pass attractions is going to be variable. So there is no set pricing depending on the crowds, depending on, you know, just the availability, the want, the 
how many people are using it is going to determine the price for each of these things. I will go into how much I paid for my trip next week, which is going to be considered, even though it's summer, the uh, just the parks have not been busy at all. And with avail availability of resorts, I can tell that the parks are not busy. So I would consider it a low end time. I will let you know how much I paid. And I'm definitely going to keep watch, especially at these busier times like Halloween, Thanksgiving week, and then the busiest time at Disney, which is the Christmas New Year's holiday. We're going to see how this price changes. Moving over to Epcot, the tier one rides at Epcot are Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Soarin' Around the World. I'm assuming that Soren will probably drop to a tier two and Test Track was probably going to move into this spot or they might just add Test Track. But because Test Track is not up and running right now, I am, especially after it comes back, I am really sure it's going to be a tier one ride. For the tier two experiences, it is Disney and Pixar short film festival, Journey into the Imagination with Figment, Living with the Land, Mission Space, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Spaceship Earth, and Turtle Talk with Crush. So I actually have a lot of thoughts about these uh, second group of experiences that you get to book, but I'm going to talk more about that again later when I talk about my own experience and how you can strategize, I'm hoping, to kind of work in your favor with some of these rides. Of course, the single pass attraction at this park is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Moving over to Hollywood Studios, your tier one rides are Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon Smuggler, and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Slinky Dog Dash. Your tier two experiences are Alien Swirling, Alien Swirling Saucers. I'm having a really hard time talking today. Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage, Disney Junior Play and Dance. For the first time in forever, a frozen sing-along, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, Muppets Vision 3D, Star Tours, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, and Toy Story Mania, and your single pass attraction at this park is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Over at Animal Kingdom Theme Park, there is no tiers, so these rides are all equal. You can just choose any three of these rides on your day that you were going to be spinning there. And those are Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, Feathered Friends and Flight Show, Festival of the Lion King Show, Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond Show, It's Tough to Be a Bug, Cali River Rapids, Kilimanjaro Safaris, and Navi River Journey. And your single pass attraction at this park is Avatar Flight of Passage. For the most part, this system is going to run a pretty much like Genie Plus did. The only difference is the uh, fact that you're going to get to purchase and book the three rides ahead of time, and then you can book, purchase and book your single pass rides ahead of time as well. So unless you're trying to get in a virtual queue, which opens at 7 a.m. on your park day, you're not going to have to wake up and you're not going to have to wake up early and purchase and grab these rides. It's going to make your mornings at the parks just a little bit easier. And one thing I did notice and I have already done is you can modify your times. So when I went in and purchased my times originally, I thought about some strategy and wanted to go and change it. And because there was availability, I easily changed all the rides, all I had purchased for for that day. I changed them all to the time that I was wanting because those times were available. So if you do go in and want to change a time and it's not available, you will not be able to. Let's just get into it and let's talk about how my day went. So yesterday, because I was six days out from my trip, it was the first day it opened. If it would have been seven days, I would have been able to. At 6 a.m. my time, because I'm central time, 7 a.m. Eastern time, I was allowed to go in and start purchasing these for my trip. So I just opened my Disney experience. I was already signed in and right there on the front page, it gave me an option to go ahead and purchase my Lightning Lane Multipass. 
Once I clicked in, I scrolled through a little bit. I know I did a pre-trip report last week with some of my plans. Those have already changed because I started really just wanting to try to maximize our time because we are on a short trip. So I changed a couple of our park days. So I had originally mentioned that we were going to do Magic Kingdom the whole first day. I changed my mind. And because we're staying at All-Star Music and we'll be very close to Animal Kingdom, I decided we're just going to run over to Animal Kingdom real quick, get everything done, and we're done with that park. Asher only wants to do four rides over there. This is going to take no time because I got all four of those rides on my multi-pass. So I went in to purchase for Animal Kingdom for July 31st was $16 a guest for the multi-pass and then for Avatar Flight of Passage single pass was $14 a person. So originally I went in and I bought the Avatar single pass rider first and I scheduled that for kind of midday and then I went in and got our multi-pass and I booked Expedition Everest, Navi River Journey, and Dinosaur and I did all those for midday. After I got done, I started and then I went through, it is non-refundable. So that is something else I'm really interested in. You're kind of stuck not being able to change your park days at this point. You're locked in. So I, after I did that, I kind of thought, oh gosh, because what I'm wanting to experience and try to work this system a little bit is when you check into your first ride for that day, you can go ahead and go make another selection. And if you have a park hopper, you can make it at any park. So this again is where I'm very interested because Animal Kingdom was the lowest cost park for the day. Magic Kingdom was at $25 a person for that day. So I possibly am gonna get to use my um, Lightning Lane Multipass over at Magic Kingdom for a lower cost than if I would have purchased it there. Now, there will be limited ride availability, and I understand that, but because we have extended evening hours at the park that day, I'm not super worried about it, so this was all just kind of my thinking when it comes to this. I really hope this is not confusing you. Please email me or reach out to me on Instagram and ask me questions if it is, because I really want to help people understand this system. So I went in and ended up changing my plans. I thought, you know what? This is our first park day. I know for one, I'm not going to be sleeping in. I'm going to be ready to go. Asher, he's already agreed that he doesn't care how much we sleep. So we are going to try to get to the park as early as we can. And I changed our times to Navi River Journey at 810. So between 810 and 910, we can ride that ride. So which now means after I check in at 810, I should be able to grab another multi-pass experience over at Magic Kingdom. Then we have Avatar Flight of Passage between 930 and 1030, Expedition Everest 1140 to 1240, and Dinosaur at 1225 to 125. In a perfect world, I'm hoping to check in at Dinosaur, ride that, and leave. So that is my goal, that we can be out of that park around 1 o'clock, 1.30 that day, and heading over to our resort and to to Magic Kingdom. I also decided to go ahead and purchase a single pass for Tron at Magic Kingdom, and I purchased that for between 7.20 and 8.20, and that ride was $20 a person. So for just one day using multi-pass and purchasing two single pass riders for each of us, I spent about $100 plus tax. That's for two people for one day. Now, this is definitely, now when you're in the parks using Genie Plus, you're still spending this amount because in my opinion, it's pretty comparative. With Genie Plus, you had to buy a park hopper multi-pass, which ended up being around $30 a person. So if you are park hopping, I'm just curious to see if they're going to change the price, if they're going to change the system a little bit more, because I actually saved money on this trip for us because I would have been paying more to have that park hopper Genie Plus option. For my second day, so for August 1st, we are starting off in Epcot and then ending in Hollywood Studios. This is where it felt very tricky for me. 
because one of the things I really wanted to do on this trip was to spend the evening in Hollywood Studios. It has been a very long time. I can't even hardly remember a time when I was at Hollywood Studios Hollywood Studios at night and I really wanted to be there at night and I really wanted to watch Fantasmic. I also don't love Hollywood Studios in the morning. It is crazy chaotic. And now with this multi-pass system, I think everyone's going to be wanting to go there in the morning and it's just going to be even more chaotic. So I'm hoping for a smoother evening. However, I know that the rides we are going to want to ride at this park will probably not have very much availability when it's time for me to go ahead and schedule a pass. Hey, it's Jenny just popping on real quick. Make sure to stay up to date with all things Disney news, all things Disney Universal cruising related by following me on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. You can also find me on Facebook at Disney Travel Tales as well. If this episode is making you want to plan a Disney vacation, then I would love to help you. All of my services are completely free to my clients, so there really is no reason not to use a travel agent. Most people don't realize that when you go and book your own Disney vacation, you are already paying that travel agent fee. So why not take advantage of that and get all of those services that you're already going to be paying for? I would love to help you plan your next trip, so make sure to check the show notes for information on how to get in contact with me, my quote form, my email, and yeah, let's make 2024 the year you go to Disney. So my initial thought was to buy the multi-pass for Hollywood Studios, which was $24 a person for that day. And just go ahead and schedule three rides for the evening, call it a day. If we get to ride anything extra, we're good. But then the part of me that also wants to experience, experiment with this program to be able to give you really good information, that side of me was like, no, your first part is Epcot. Let's just start in Epcot. Let's get really early lightning lanes and see what's available when we head over to Hollywood Studios. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up booking Epcot, which was $18 a guest. And then um, the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind was $15 a guest as well. So for our Epcot day, I knew we were going to be spending the night, you know, we're doing extended evening out evening hours. We're going to be out really late at Magic Kingdom. Epcot opens a little bit later. I'm not worried about necessarily getting there for early entry for Epcot. I went ahead and booked a Spaceship Earth between 930 and 1030. We are going to be riding the monorail over so I know we're walking into the main entrance of Epcot. My plan was to hop on that ride, scan into that lightning lane, and then make try to see what's available at Hollywood Studios. Hey, this is Jenny, just popping on with some exciting news. I've started a Facebook group just for you. I'm really excited about this because not only will this be a great opportunity to get to know each other, but this is also a safe space to talk all things Disney. Members can share travel tips, resort tips, likes and dislikes, and the best part is this will give you an opportunity to talk to the guest on the show and ask them questions about their trips. I was trying to think of a fun name for us, and Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse came to mind. This is a private group, and of course, I will not allow anyone to be bullied or talked down to. I just want this space to be positive and fun. Check the show notes for a link to join, or just search Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse in Facebook. I can't wait to see you over there. After Spaceship Earth, I have The Seas with Nemo and Friends, 10.15 to 11.15. 
I purchased the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at 10.30 to 11.30. I'm also planning on getting a virtual queue for this as well because this is my favorite ride and I really want to ride it twice with Asher. I know he's going to love it. And then at that point, which this is pretty early in the morning, there wasn't a ton of availability for Remy's. Asher's never rode Remy's, so I really wanted him to, but I also wanted to um, really spend a lot of time in the World Showcase and do other things in the front, like we're going to ride Soren. Um, but that typically doesn't have a long line, so I didn't want to waste my tier one on that when I know that Remy's always has a pretty decently long line. So I went ahead and made our Remy's for 2.30 to 3.35. My goal on this day is as soon as we are done with Spaceship Earth to start booking Hollywood Studios. As every opportunity that I have to get a lightning lane and on this day, I will do at Hollywood Studios after we get these rides done. So for this day, I only spent $66 plus tax on this because Cosmic Rewind is the only single pass that I got us. Asher doesn't really care about Rise of the Resistance, and I figured we might try the single rider line for that. So I'm not really sure. If he wants to ride it, we'll just stand in line or do the single rider for that. I didn't feel like purchasing it. He really could care less about Star Wars. But in the moment, if we're there and he wants to do it, we'll figure that out. Okay, so for our final park day, August 2nd, this is where things got... This is where I changed most of my plans. I want to maximize our time. I want to spend as much time or the least amount of time driving and using Disney transportation to get to the parks and the most amount of time in the parks. We're staying at the Poly. We are right by Magic Kingdom. It's going to be so much easier for us to pack our bags up, to check out of our room, to head to the club to grab breakfast, put our bags in our car, and then walk over or ride the monorail over to Magic Kingdom. And just spend the morning there. Just spend the rest of the time we have at the parks there. And this way I'm also going to have a chance to use the multi-pass to get those main attraction rides that Asher really wants to ride as well. So for this day, I purchased the multi-pass at Magic Kingdom Park. It was $25 a guest. And then I went ahead and I purchased the Tron Light Cycle Run for $20 a guest. I did not purchase Seven Dwarfs Mine Train for this day. I'm actually going to see if there's availability when we get there maybe, or maybe in a couple of days. But my whole plan for that ride was just to ride it at extended evening hours. I personally hate paying for this ride. I don't even know why it's on single pass. I feel like it should have been in the multi-pass, um, but it is what it is. I'm also hoping to get a... Um, I'm also planning for this day to either get a Tron virtual queue or a Tiana's virtual queue, depending on which ride Asher likes better from our first day at Magic Kingdom. So for this day, I decided to use my tier one for Tiana's in case we didn't get to ride it the first day. I really want to ride this ride on this trip. The number one ride Asher wants to ride is Space Mountain. I don't mind standing in that line. It's always way shorter than it actually says it is. And I'm kind of hoping I can grab a Space Mountain after I've checked in on our first day to one of the rides or even on this day. So I went with Tiana's because you can't just stand in line for that. You have to either do the virtual queue or the line. So I just decided to go ahead and purchase it for the line. Then I, so starting at the beginning, I went with the earliest time slot that I could find for a ride that I thought Asher would like. And that was Haunted Mansion at 915 to 1015. Now he actually doesn't like this ride, but compared to some of the other choices, I think he likes it the best. Then I did Pirates of the Caribbean at 10 and Tiana's at 1115. My plan is just to stay over there in Adventureland and Frontierland and get things done. See the Country Bears. Um, after Haunted Mansion, I'm actually going to try to grab Big Thunder. That's just my plan. Stay in that area. Get that stuff done. Then I have a Tron light cycle from 1 to 2. I'm thinking stay in Adventureland, Frontierland, head over to Tomorrowland, do People Mover, some of the other things Asher wants to do over there, grab lunch, do Tron, maybe hop on Space Mountain one more time and then leave the park. So that's my plan for that day. Now, overall, oh, let's talk about how much I spent on this day. So this day I spent 
um, plus tax. So my most expensive day was the first day because I bought two of the single pass rides. This day might end up being more expensive if I go ahead and buy the seven dwarfs. I'd be an extra $22 plus tax on top of the $90 that I spent. Overall, the system for me was very easy to work. I had no glitches. Also, just from per, like experience with Disney system, I never, ever, ever get on the second it's released. So right at 6 a.m., I was not on buying it. I actually waited till around 6.15 a.m. I know people who were on right at 6 a.m. and they actually had glitches in their account and had to call Disney and ended up waiting for like 45 minutes to get this ironed out and fixed. They did get the rides they want at the time they want, but I mean, just with Disney, sometimes you just want to wait a little bit. Waiting till 6.15, I still got all early times. I still got all the times that I wanted. And of course, this is just the first day. I'm sure once the system's rolling, people aren't going to have these issues. But for me, it was very, very easy. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how this system works. I liked having the chance to know that we at least have some rides and times that we're not going to have to stand in line for I am really happy I got them very early so I can go ahead and start going in and making my next selections once we scan into that first ride early in the morning. I am worried about the availability. That's probably the biggest thing that I'm really curious to see how this works is what is my availability going to look at when I'm in the park after I've scanned into that first ride. I'm really hoping that it's not too bad. With Genie Plus, I had kind of mastered it. And I was very good at getting ride selections and I was very good at planning my days at the park. So I wasn't running all over the place all the time. And I just wonder if this system is going to be like that and if the availability is going to be as good. So this is just something that it's definitely gonna be in park waiting to see. I know that yesterday I was following some accounts, watching how it went for people who were in the parks and availability wasn't great. Like especially at Hollywood Studios, there were rides that by the time people had scanned into their first selection were not even available. Um, so we'll just have to see how it goes. I do think during busy seasons, it is going to be tougher to get those uh, rides after your first scan in. But at least you're guaranteed three rides, which was kind of the way it was with FastPass. The only difference was is you didn't have to pay for FastPass. Overall, my experience was great. Now I am just so excited to get into the park and start using this hands-on. Like, I want to see how it works. Now, people are, you know, the extra cost. Yes, it is definitely an extra cost, especially... If you are a large family, like if my family of five was going, yeah, I would have be, I'd be spending a lot more, especially for Tron at $20 a person. Like it really makes you think, is it worth it? For me personally, you're spending so much money on a Disney vacation already. Like, let's be honest. These vacations are not cheap. You're already investing a lot in this vacation. This you know, using a system like this is really just pennies on the dollar when it comes to having a magical streamlined experience. Do you have to use it? Absolutely not. You can just head to the parks. You can just watch wait times, watch for times to drop and go stand in the standby line. Like Asher and I are still going to be standing in standby lines. I know it's just allowing us an opportunity to not have to stand in so many standby lines. Okay, so I am ready for all of your questions. Please reach out to me, Jenny at trolleylanetravel.com. Email me your questions. Let's talk about this. Head over to Instagram and shoot me a DM. I am ready to answer your questions from the information that I have, from the things that I currently know right now, I wanna help you with. For my current clients, I am still actually undecided if this is a service I'm going to offer my clients. I do have a client who is traveling in August and I am going to do it for her because it is still so new and um, I'm just offering her this service, but I'm going to see how that actually works for her and for me. Like I want to know from her experience when she gets back, if she liked me booking these for her, if she wishes she would have done it herself. 
Because for me personally, when it comes to my in park days, I like to control the time. And it was really nice having that option to be, you know, like I'm in control of the times. I know this is when we're going to get to the park. I know that, you know, we can get from this side to this ride. For someone else, For me doing it for someone else, I don't know how fast they walk. You know, I don't know how long they're going to want to stay in a certain area. And so I don't actually know if your travel agent doing this for you is going to be a good option. So what I want to do is teach you, teach my clients how to do it so that they can do it for themselves and be in control of their own time. I'd also like to know your thoughts on that as well. Would you want someone doing this for you or would you want to just have control yourself and do it for yourself? Okay, so thanks for listening to the show today. That long-awaited Q&A is next week. I will be in the parks next week, um, but I'm also, there will be an episode out next Friday. It's my Q&A. I've had so many fantastic questions that people have asked me on Instagram. I've kept track of all of them. So that episode will be out next week. Make sure that you're following me on Disney Travel Tales on Instagram so that you can follow along in the parks. I'm going to be very good this time. I'm not usually good when I'm in the parks, actually, you know, keeping live updates. But my goal this trip is I'm going to be giving live updates on how things are going, showing you what club level is like at the Polynesian, room tours, everything. So make sure you're following along for all of that fun, that hot, sweaty fun, because yeah, it's going to be very hot in July in Florida. That's a wrap on today's show. As always, thanks for listening. Make sure to visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. If you're wanting to support the show, the best and easiest way to do that is to leave a five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy and means the world to me. Can't wait to be back next week with you. So until then, this is Jenny and may all your Disney travel dreams come true.